Hello everyone. In this tutorial we are going to be looking at sculpting the feet and legs in ZBrush. As always, it is essential that you have good reference material, such as concepts and photographic images, to observe throughout completing your work. The first and most important phase of sculpting should be establishing the general shape and silhouette from all perspectives. This is very similar to the hands and arm tutorial. It is always advisable to plan out your workflow. This doesn't waste time. If you do it right, then it greatly saves time. So I've got my reference images of the feet from different angles laid out here. And I'm also looking at some existing studies and breakdowns of the foot anatomy. Now, in the last video, I emphasized the importance of measuring out your artwork by using ratios. That exact principle can and should be repeated again here. So I'm going to look at the length of this foot, make a mark where the big toe starts, analyze the arc of the knuckles, and mark where the ball of the foot ends. I can now see that the length of the distal phalange part of the big toe goes into the length of the foot exactly six times. However, this measurement isn't great as it does leave a big margin for error. A simpler measurement I'm noticing is that the distance from the ball of the foot to the tip of the big toe goes into the length of the foot exactly three times. And conveniently enough, this measurement also goes exactly once into the width of the widest part of the foot, which is across the knuckles. Excellent, so those are my guidelines established. I'll dock them on my other screen. If you are working on one screen, then I really do urge you to have your reference images visible whilst you work, even if you have to shrink down your canvas area. So I've created a new document, and I'm going to drag out a 3D cube onto the canvas area. This is going to be the base of my character's foot, and I'm going to convert that to a polymesh 3D. I'm going to squash and stretch it out using the move tool in the side views and subdivide it up to around 100,000 active points. I'll now cut out the general shape of the foot using the trim tools. I'd say this is already a good time to refer back to your reference photos. Now I'm particularly interested in finding a measurement that is relatable between the lower shin and the height of the tarsal bones at the top of the foot. It's also worth noting that the inner part of the foot is significantly higher than the outer part. So the foot is sloping towards the little toe. I'll carry on shaping the foot with those measurements in mind using the trim brushes. When things get a little too complex, I like to refer back to a simplified breakdown. Remember, this is the base of the foot, so I'll add the toes later on as we did with the fingers. Now most of your characters will be wearing some form of footwear. That is fine. I advise that you only sculpt the rough shape of this anatomy as a guide and for good practice. You can sculpt the footwear over the top afterward using a separate subtool. Once I've established the basic shape, I'll frequently dynamesh and utilize the clay build-up brush using circular stroke patterns. I try to avoid smoothing things out until later on. Before I deeply develop this section, I like to add in the toes as separate subtools. I prefer to keep these as separate subtools so that I can easily manipulate them down the pipeline. And as you can see, it is quite time efficient to just model one digit and then simply duplicate it. This is very similar to what we did with the hands and fingers. Now that the toes are in place, I can fully utilize the measurements that I discovered earlier in my planning with the reference material. Because my character is going to be wearing boots, I won't go into the full detail of sculpting the nails on the toes. But if you want to do that, then you can use a similar method as we did with the fingers. I'm now at a stage where I'm ready to sculpt the legs. My character is a tall and fairly toned 5 foot 9 female. I'm going to have to mix up a few references here to get the exact result I want. It's always a good idea to use a ratio measurement system like the one I did at the beginning of this video whilst establishing the general shape. I'm going to go ahead and append a cube as a new subtool and stretch it out to cover the entirety of the leg. I find it easier and more time efficient to just manually sculpt this section. Now I find that the muscles of the quads and calves all wrap around the leg in a slight diagonal line towards the big toe. Now this is much like the characteristics of the muscles in the arm. The simple way to think about this is that the muscles on the inner side of the leg always sit slightly lower than the muscles on the outside of the leg. And once again, whilst we're making big changes to the sculpt, I always advise just using the clay build-up brush and avoid smoothing out your work until later on. 
From here on out, it is very much a case of using your artistic merit to create the desired result you want. Remember, though, that general shape and proportion always takes priority over finer details, and you should never be afraid to experiment with some big changes if you feel that something isn't quite looking the way it should with your work. I think it's always good to try and imagine yourself as the character you are creating. How would the shape and posture of your feet affect the rest of your body? Consider how muscle density may also dictate the posture of the legs and how much the knees may flare, for example. The positioning of a character's pelvis will also be impacted by this, so be sure to keep researching for good reference material. Okay, so that about finishes it up for this sculpt. I won't go into any further detail on this until I've sculpted in the remaining parts of the body and retopologize them. I'd like to thank you all for watching and feel free to comment with any questions below and I'll see you next time.